Hey, what's up, comic fans? It's Mr. Q Comics back with some more show and tell. Okay, today I've got a bit of a mixed bag. This is going to be just kind of a highlight haul video. Uh, a bunch of books I picked up over the past three or four months that I have not gotten around to putting into haul videos. This is stuff I've picked up all over, stuff out on, you know, while I'm on a business trips, shops I don't get to around me that are, you know, too frequently that are maybe an hour away, stuff like that. So again, just kind of highlight stuff I'm holding for the PC. So before I dive into the books, guys, if you're a fan of haul videos, do me a favor, go down below, hit the like button, hit subscribe, let me know what you think about these books. Okay, we'll start out with a couple of Adam Hughes covers that I picked up. I got these uh, out in Western New York, in Lancaster, New York. Um, I was out there for work and I had some time to pop into a small shop called uh, 3D Comics. Um, more of an online store. They were doing a lot of whatnot sales, but they had some books out uh, that I could dig through. So I picked up a couple of Adam Hughes covers. Voodoo number four from Image. Not an expensive book, but uh, I did not have this. This is a nice near mint copy. Picked that up for five bucks, which is probably what it's worth. Again, not expensive on that run, but there's some cool Adam Hughes covers there. Next, I got A-Force number one. I think this is volume two, but it's the hip-hop cover. You know, there's a lot of hype about A-Force after Endgame. I think all that stuff has cooled down. A lot of these spec books have really come way back down to earth, um, which is, you know, to be expected. But uh, I just grabbed this because it's a cool Adam Hughes cover. This is like 20 bucks, which again, probably what it's worth now. Uh, nice, nice copy, near mint copy, so... Very happy with that. I thought I didn't have it, but I realized I had bought a couple on eBay a few years back. So, anyways, sorry to have another copy. All right, next. This is just a cool Bronze Age book. I love these Spidey Super Stories. Uh, they're just so, so many cool covers. This is issue number 16. I got this at Palmer. I think it's Antique Co-op. Uh, in Palmer, Massachusetts, that I heard about from Mike at Lunch Money Comics. This is super low grade, but it was only uh, a few bucks. It looks decent, but it's it's wavy from water damage. Of course, it's the Jaws homage. I had to I had to grab that. These uh, Spidey Super Stories books are hysterical. They're just uh, obviously meant for kids with the Electric Company, but uh, I think they're cool. So happy to find that as a placeholder until I find a better copy. All right, back to New York. This was outside Syracuse. This uh, this was more of a record store. It was called Funky Town Comics and Vinyl. So we had some books in there. A little bit of back issues, not a ton. Um, but I was able to pick up one book there. This is Wonder Woman, number 200. I definitely overpaid on this. I knew I was overpaying when I got it, but... I really liked hanging out in the shop. I, we, I chatted with the guy for well after closing. It was a cool shop, especially if you're into vinyl, because he had a lot of that. Uh, a lot of his prices were kind of high, I thought. So I, I really just wanted to buy something because, you know, I enjoyed hanging out in the shop. So uh, I picked this up. It's probably mid-grade copy. I paid like 60 bucks for it, which is, you know, definitely too high. Um, but nice Jeff Jones cover. Of course, Wonder Woman bondage cover. Those are always popular. Uh, 1972 on the date on this so uh cool book again very cool shop it was unique with all the vinyl so if you're into vinyl and comics great uh great spot for you so it was outside of syracuse i forget the, the exact spot that it was but cool pick up there next is a shop i can't remember if i've been here before i think this was the first time it's called electric city electric city comics and collectibles maybe uh it's in schenectady um i picked up a few books there but i'm just going to show off a couple first we've got this is one of my favorite steranko covers it, it's really affordable uh definitely underrated in my opinion but uh nick fury agent of shield number six number one can be pretty pricey but in general nick fury this nick fury silver age run is really inexpensive compared to other silver age marvel runs but i just think this is an awesome steranko cover um you know i love the black space background the cool space suit i think it's awesome it's one of my favorites uh of the nick fury runs so this is a mid-grade copy like probably fine range and i think it was like 20 bucks which is probably about what it's worth it's not an expensive book it's a ton of them on ebay and i think it's just a fantastic piece of steranko art so I had it, but I had a super low-grade copy, uh, so that's a nice upgrade for me. Next is another book I have. Uh, I don't know if this one's in better shape. I think the one I have is in a little bit better shape, but just a classic Spidey cover. Amazing Spider-Man number 100. Awesome uh, Ramita anniversary issue with all the Spidey characters in the background. you got Aunt May, Mary Jane, the Rogues Gallery in there, so just an awesome cover. Uh, this is lower grade, probably in the VG range, but I think this one worked out to like 65 bucks, so I thought that was a great deal on this. This can be pretty pricey, especially in high grades with the, uh, with the black cover, so always great to pick up more Spidey. I will never pass up affordable Spidey. Okay, next we've got 
four books from this shop I go to uh, fairly often because I drive by like every time I'm heading out for work I'm driving by this place this is a uh, Krypton Comics uh, I think it's Exeter New Hampshire so he has a ton of toys it's a very cool shop uh, does you know does all all the collectibles he's got records in there he's got he does a lot of Pokemon cards which is cool because I, when I go in on the weekends I'll see a lot of kids coming in trading cards and stuff he's got new toys he's got some vintage stuff in there and he's got some comics not a ton uh, but every so often there's some great stuff in there so this was a few months back but I picked up some nice books here uh, this is nothing expensive but it's a J. Scott Campbell cover I did not have Danger Girl and the Army of Darkness number one uh, decent shape on this I don't know if I wrote it down uh, probably VF range, but it was only a few bucks. I hadn't seen that one before. I thought it was super cool. So that'll go in the Campbell collection. Next, we get another Campbell book. Uh, Spider-Gwen, number one. This is the Midtown Comics uh, sketch variant. I was surprised when I find these type of Midtown books in my local uh, shops just on the wall. So, I, you know, I don't see a lot of these types of variants flowing around my shops. And most of my local shops really do not buy enough modern books to get into you know, bigger variants. Obviously, this is a Midtown exclusive, but very cool Campbell cover. I think I paid 25 for this, something like that. 20 bucks, 25. I can't remember. I don't know if I wrote it down. Oh, I paid like a little over 30, which is probably a little too much. I think you can get it cheaper than that on eBay. But uh, when I find this stuff at local shops, uh, I'm happy to pay a little bit more uh, just because I love buying from the local shops and uh, shooting the breeze with the shop owners. So very cool copy, uh, very cool book, nice copy, probably near mint range. So again, going into the Campbell collection. Next is uh, another cover artist I'm a huge fan of. If you watch my haul videos, I'm always hunting these books down. Uh, did not have this one, but it is a Dave Stevens cover, Betty Page Comics from, I think this is just number one, from Dark Horse. Now, I think the book came out in 92, but the Stevens artwork is from 81. I could not find reference to if this was printed elsewhere originally uh, or if it was just unpublished. I'm assuming it was printed somewhere else and I just couldn't find the information, but Awesome Betty Page uh, cover here. This is in nice shape. Uh, this one was, this was like 25 bucks and this is like a near mint coffee. So to me, that was worth it. Again, maybe if you're patient, you can find it cheaper on eBay. But uh, Dave Stevens to me has gotten more um, more expensive over the past few years. When I first got back into collecting, I always find it a lot cheaper. And now a lot of people seem to be wise to how awesome Dave Stevens art is. I mean, to me, the best kind of modern pinup artist out there. Uh, I've got a handful of books to still kind of hunt down. I can find them on eBay, but I don't like buying them on eBay. I like finding them in shops. That's the exciting part. So I was super psyched that he had this one up there. Really nice copy. Super happy to get this one for the D. Stevens collection. And finally, this this was the pickup uh, of this haul. I mean, I thought this was a great deal on this. It is low grade, but it's Superman's girlfriend, number 70. This is the first Silver Age Catwoman. Super low grade, good range. Covers, I think, completely detached. Uh, again, first Silver Age Catwoman. You've got the cool classic penguin in the bottom here. So this is expensive, even in low grade, but he had this up for uh, like 32 bucks, which I thought was a steal. So uh, I'm not typically a DC collector, but... I'm not going to pass up cheap keys like this. So, uh, great find on that. Okay, getting down to the last few books. We've got four books. Yeah, four books that I picked up at a local flea market. I go up here occasionally. It's usually not a ton of comics. Uh, it's an indoor flea market, only open on the weekends. Uh, and there's just one vendor I've been buying from. I showed off books uh, over this past year that I've picked up. I found some great Great stuff hiding in the cabinets because he's just like overflowing with stuff and he's got a ton of locked cabinets. So it's one of those places where you often just don't want to get him to open the case because you really have to s dig the stuff out. But uh, I found these great books there. These are not comics, but these are kind of like picture biography books, I guess I'll, I'll call them. Uh, Boris Vallejo Art. This is, I don't know who put these out. Uh... Anaconda Press, but uh, he had these. This is number one. I think this is the third print. I did a little bit of YouTube censoring on the artwork. <laughs> uh, but beautiful artwork. I don't have a ton of Boris Vallejo stuff. I think I had found like a weird Tales of the Macabre uh, magazine once. It had an amazing piece of art. I ended up selling it, but uh, really cool fantasy artwork. And uh, these are, you know, mid-grade, probably fine, very fine range. They were like uh, 30 bucks a piece, which... 
The reason I picked them up, though, is uh, they're both signed by Boris Vallejo on the inside, unlike the splash page back in the 80s, which I thought was super cool. Uh, and it's really cool. You open them up. It's got, you know, pictures of, of his process. He's got pictures of, like, him dressed up like a gladiator or something. There's obviously someone taking photos of him in these positions, and he's using them as photo reference. He's got one of his, his kid doing this, and, and then it shows you the art that he made from the photo reference. So I thought that was super cool. Again, it's gorgeous artwork, signed. I could not pass these up. Here's book number two. I don't know how many of these there are. I think book number two is a first print, but just awesome fantasy artwork. And I thought it was great being signed for 30 bucks. I couldn't pass those up. And these weren't even buried. These were just sitting there on the floor. He had a note in them that they were signed by Boris Vallejo. Uh, really surprised they were still sitting there. So anyways, I thought those were super cool pickups. And then he had brought in... I kind of dug through. He had some Golden Age stuff, and I found some crazy uh, books just kind of buried in his cases months before this. And uh, he had been promising to bring in, bring in some other boxes from home that he had buried. And we finally connected, and he had uh, some nice stuff in there. I got a copy of uh, Spider-Man I was missing. Amazing Spider-Man number seven. Completely shredded. Staples added. Cover detached. Tears. I mean, it's like in the fair range, but it's complete. Uh, artwork, not bad. <laughs> Still, you know... Artwork's there, so I'm happy with it. Second appearance of the Vulture. You got a Steve Ditko cover from 1963. Uh, again, probably fair, good range, but it was like $105 is what it worked out to, bundles with everything. So I thought that was a fantastic deal on a filler copy. Uh, so super happy to add another book to the ASM run. And finally, this was something I hadn't seen. I just thought the artwork was phenomenal. It is a Golden Age book, Space Busters number one. Painted cover by, I'm forgetting who painted the cover here, uh, Norman Saunders on the painted cover. This is Ziff Davis Publications from 1952. This one was a little more expensive. This is probably in the VG range, and I paid about 165 bucks for this. So I wasn't quite sure, you know, uh, on the value of that. I think I did pretty good on it. I've looked up some, some recent sales. It's tough to find recent sales, but I can see what people are asking. It seems to be in the ballpark, but to me, I had never seen it before. I thought the cover was beautiful. You know, a Golden Age book in pretty decent shape for 165 bucks. I thought that was, you know, worth the gamble. Uh, I looked this up. I think there's two issues in this series. Number two being a little bit more expensive because it's got a, uh, another very cool painted cover, but a bondage cover. So, uh, I'll be on the lookout for that, but I was super happy with this. I think this is an unbelievable cover. So very stoked to add that one to the Golden Age collection. All right, finally, two more big boy books, uh, different shops. This uh, next one, again, something I got tipped off from uh, Mike at Lunch Money Comics. Just watching one of his videos, he was highlighting the shop, and uh, I saw this book on the wall, and this place is not too far from me. It is Nick's Comic Strip in I think it's Danvers, Massachusetts. So I am not too far from there. So I made a point to hit this place up. Mike had given out like coupons. I'm sure a lot of you guys got some of those from him if you've uh, bumped into him. So I went in to use some of those coupons and uh, Nick didn't want to use it on like the big wall books, but he basically gave me the equivalent in all his back issue books for free. And uh, he had this marked at, I think he had it 800. So it is X-Men number four. First appearance of Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch. You got the second appearance of Magneto. First appearance of Toad and the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. So this is by far and away uh, one of my top X-Men books. Uh, probably my top, the, the top book in my X-Men collection now. Really low grade. It's probably, I put it at about a two, maybe, maybe up to a three on a very generous day. But I thought that was a pretty decent price. So again, I got like you know, 140 bucks worth, something like that, a free back issue books. So uh, I was very stoked to grab this. He had a lot of his stuff put away because this, this was quite a while ago. And I think he had a show coming up and uh, he had put this in that pile. But uh, he let me take it home that day. So I was very excited. Very cool shop. Uh, Nick's has a ton of stuff, a uh, ton of toys. If you're into that too, he had, I think he had a ton of like vintage G.I. Joe stuff. It was like, if you're a G.I. Joe guy, Definitely go check this place out. He had a ton of that stuff. So very cool shop and a huge pickup here. Stokes to add this one to the collection. So, All right, finally, Golden Age book. Absolutely shocked that I found this. Just again, this is a shop I hit up a lot. It's uh, Greenbush Out of Print Comics in Albany. I got a big stack of books on this haul, but I'm just showing off this one. 
you know, sometimes he has some books uh, set aside and he pulled the box out. I've gotten to know him over the past year or two. I've, I've stopped in there quite a few times and spent quite a lot of money. And uh, I was just digging through the back issues that he had in this separate box, not out on the floor, the kind of older stuff. And this was just sitting in there. It's really low grade and it is technically restored, but it's complete. Submariner Comics number 32. Artwork presents nicely, but if you can see it, someone like reinforced the spine. You can see the white there, right underneath that tape. It just kind of almost looks like cardstock someone put in years ago. So I'm not going to mess with it because I don't know if the book's going to fall apart. I knew exactly what I was getting. Uh, but again, it's complete. It's super low grade. I mean, I mean, it's complete. It's restored, but it's probably in the you know poor range. Um, but the artwork's there, and it's like the origin retold Bill Everett cover uh, from 1949. So this was, I thought, uh, extremely affordable. He gave this to me with a ton of other books. It worked out to only a few hundred bucks, which I thought was a great deal, even though it's technically restored. I mean, you don't just walk across these too often. It's the type of book I'd only see at a, uh, at a con. So I was super happy to grab this. I don't, there was a bunch of other books, a bunch of golden age books I got with it. So I spent a lot that day. So, uh, and he always gives affordable prices. So very, very happy to find that book. So that is it for the haul guys. Again, uh, if you are a fan of these types of videos, please do me a favor, go down below, hit the like button, hit subscribe. Let me know what you think about these books and I'll see you soon.